Well, tis the season to be offended. This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. Well, it's hard to believe that tomorrow is the shortest day of the year in the Northern Hemisphere. Vastly more darkness than light. And as I look at the Western world and the Northern Hemisphere, it's very fitting. We have descended into a time of darkness that I I find unprecedented. I debate what I should do with this radio program each and every day. And some days are easy, some days are hard. I look at the stories that are out there, the ones, should I share these, should I just forget it? Is it worth even being a watchman on the wall anymore? Especially when you feel like you're on the losing side. And oftentimes I feel very, very defeated. I bet many of you feel the same way. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to look at some of the nonsense that is pushed around as science today to realize it's all fraud. It's all fake. It's all emotion. It's propaganda. It's control. I have a healthy respect for science. I always have. I've loved electronics. It's pretty logical. It makes sense the way certain components interact with each other. How many theorems are self-explanatory. And it's very logical, organized, makes perfect sense. Yet we are told to believe lies. We're told to believe nonsense. And it's all done in the name of saving our planet being diverse. You can go on and on all day long. And we have children today coming through our school systems that oftentimes can't read or write, don't have common sense. It's sad. It's the world in which we live. And every day I I try to come to this microphone to share some news stories and and I want to share hope. And some days it's just not easy. Here we are. Christmas is this weekend. And the never ending war on Christians never ceases. Oh, I get laughed at. And you know something? I've gotten to the point at my age, I frankly don't care. People can listen to this program, call me some kind of a weirdo, a Bible thumper. I don't believe in science. Now, I just don't believe in frauds, fools, and phonies like some of the ones that make the accusations to me. If you want to believe there are 62 genders or 93 genders, then you can be as mentally ill as you want to be by choice. Because that's the only way to describe it. There is no such thing as 62 construct genders or 94. The number keeps changing, which only goes to show just how deep the mental illness is that is destroying the human brain. Transgenderism is a social construct. It is not a real condition. Yet people are cashing in by the millions of dollars on this newfound phenomena, which makes absolutely zero sense unless you have a sick, evil, perverted mind. Only people with a sick, evil, perverted mind want to talk to second graders about them being in the wrong body. Why would some green and purple haired fool want to be with piercings and tattoos, pink glasses, want to be a second grade teacher to confuse children to say, you know, Johnny, your name really should be Jill. You should be a girl. We need to have, and don't tell your parents, we need to fix this. And we can, just don't tell your parents. Hey, hey, Susan, maybe your name should be Sam. Maybe we should, you know, Bind your breast now that you're turning 13 so they don't look like a woman. Maybe you should be a boy. Maybe we should talk to a counselor, but not your parents. Maybe we can get you medication and surgery to to fix what was wrong with you to begin with from birth. 
And, and, and what I find even more insane, I mean, literally insane, these same reprobates that are trying to explain to your child that you're in the wrong body will even go as far as to say children know in the womb they're the wrong person, they're the wrong, you know, gender. That little boys at age, you know, five months, five months in the womb, they already know it's all wrong. And somehow we're going to have to get it fixed. These evil, perverted individuals pushing this stuff. These fools that profess themselves to be wise in the medical profession, thinking this is all normal. They're just greedy for the money. They have sold their souls to Satan. There is no life. There's no health in them. Our medical establishment today is nothing but corporate greed. I saw it coming. I've mentioned this before. I'll mention it now. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. But, you know, here in the United States, we now have achieved fascist health care. Fascist health care. In spite of all the wrangling that we wanted to have medical freedom in this country, we, we don't. See, where some countries have national health care like England and they can't afford it, or Canada, which is why they're pushing medical-assisted suicide because they can't afford their health care system anymore. And so what are the bankrupt, mentally, spiritually, morally individuals that lead that nation into hell do? Well, maybe you should consider suicide. We can't help you anymore. And if you have a mental illness, we, we think suicide's really a great idea for you. These are the mentally ill reprobates that are pushing this stuff. They want you dead. They want to be alive. It's evil. And, and I feel like I'm going against the grain every day when I get before this microphone. And sometimes I wonder, is it even worth it? Am I wasting my time? And I'm sure some of you out there that hate Christians and and love you know the, the fake sciences out there and worshiping the earth and 32 genders, 62 genders, whatever the number of the day is, would like to see people like me gone. You don't like to have that conscience bothering you. And when somebody points out you're evil, you don't like it. But I'm going to keep pointing it out. These perverted people going after children or that they 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 deserve to be in prison for the rest of their lives nowhere near children in a perfect world they would face the death penalty for some of the things they're doing to children today as the bible says better to put a mill stone around their neck than get these people these clowns next to kids then you have social media and Google, and Yahoo, and all of them, they're on board all this, this perversion. They push it like, like drug dealers pushing heroin back in the day. Destructive, greed, it all rolls together. And then there are days like today when I come before this microphone and I feel drained, I feel empty, and I feel like I just want to give up. Now, granted, some of what I'm going through right now has to do with my health, and it will get better. I've had a couple of good days these past couple of days, but I'm still tired. I'm still worn out, and we'll, that'll continue for a while. I understand it. It's part of the recuperation process. If I could take the next month off and not have to come before this microphone. If I could take a month away from the news stories, the headlines, the responsibilities, the emails, the preparation, I would be one of the happiest people on the face of the earth, but I can't do it. There's nobody else to do the radio program. There's nobody to fill the time at the radio stations. I can't, I can't leave that in somebody else's hands right now as much as I wish that I could. And in the middle of all this, I even feel a stronger call on my life to prepare you for, I think, some really rocky days and rocky roads ahead. And when I say rocky road, I'm not talking ice cream. I'm talking some really difficult times. We, we look today, and, and I'm, these are the things that are really on my heart and my mind. 
you know, it's easy. Like I've used the term before, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. I think I mentioned that yesterday. When I look at all the weirdness that is out there in politics and leadership in the world today, in education, public education in particular, colleges like Oberlin College prove themselves to be, you know, these people are not intelligent. They have a high IQ and they've learned how to take a high IQ and make it a mockery. These people are wise to the point of being fools. They slander. They're into their wokeism. They're into their sickness and their evil so much that they're blinded. They no longer can even see the truth. And as I've mentioned this before, even the church, in many churches, they are no longer, they are no longer safe places of worship, strengthening each, each other, coming together in prayer, gathering around Christ's table. Today, too many churches are nothing more than theater venue entertainment. Like I just said before, Spurgeon said it best, we're entertaining the goats and not feeding the sheep. And I'm getting to the point, even in the work that I do in the ministry, you know, what what is important to be done? Even on the ministry side of my house, the things that I'm involved with, and there's some things that I need to be involved with, but these past few months have been draining on me physically, mentally, and emotionally as I'm trying to physically get better, and I'm having to take on challenges that I really don't want to take on right now. I have nowhere to go. I have nobody to, to pick up the work and it's it's scary but here i am another day another radio program trying to outline to you the things that are important and so what i want to do this week and even into next as as the lord gives me the strength to continue to do the program I'm sure there's some mockers out there saying, yeah, just go die, go away. Yeah, take a vacation. We don't need Bible thumpers and science deniers. You know, nah, I, no, you're the science deniers. I, I, I'm old enough to observe and I've watched the lies one after the other and you keep trying to reinvent the lie. I'm tired of it. I don't need indoctrination to my kids and my grandkids and my great grandkids on this phony earth worship phony transgenderism sodomy and everything else that goes with it trying to promote it I'm sick and tired of phony Catholics like Joe Biden oh yeah I believe in abortion we need to protect a woman's health care yeah I didn't know that I didn't know that Butchering a child in the womb is health care now. Only somebody with a satanic mind would believe that ripping a child apart in the womb and dismembering it is health care. And only a reprobate would believe that Jesus endorses it. Joe Biden does. Nancy Pelosi does. The vice president, Kamala Harris, does. And a bunch of perverted bishops in the Roman Catholic Church, or they're all for same-sex marriage. And who are they going after? The pro-life priest. They don't want their sins being exposed. They love living in darkness. And then so-called Protestants, the ones that came through the Reformation, trying to be the biblical church, they're entertaining goats. They're making a mockery of Christmas in some of their entertainment that they're putting out there and calling it scriptural. They are leading people into the gates of hell to move in. Not to fight, but to join them. And then you have once great churches. Once great churches that stood for truth. Martin Luther, here I stand. I cannot be moved. This is what the scripture says. 
Many, many people died for their faith. They were, they were executed for their faith, burned at the stake for their faith because they would no longer bow down and believe the lie. Today, the inheritors of those churches are now first church of Satan as far as I'm concerned. These little social justice covens of witches and warlocks old aging baby boomers that have rejected the gospel running around in their little vestments of rainbows. It's disgusting. It's sickening. And it's repugnant to an almighty God. You know, I I mentioned this to somebody, I, 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 may, I may have even said on the radio program yesterday, I think I did. Remember, I'm really tired. My blood count is really low because of all the, the blood and the urine that I put up with for weeks. It really took its toll. And so, like I say, I wish I could take a week or two off to just, you know, get my strength back. There's a lot that needs to be done in 2023 if Jesus should tarry. But so much of what is promoted financially in Christian circles is really getting under my skin. Now we have the Veggie Tales creator calling homosexual LGBT brothers and sisters, and we should all learn to get along and and everything's okay. Can't call sin anymore. Sin. Not allowed to discuss sin. In some churches, and I'll call them out, Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, a good chunk of the United Methodist Church, Presbyterian Church, United States of America, the Episcopal Church in the United States, Anglican Church of of Canada, parts of the Church of England. I can go down the long list. They're apostate. They have thrown out the gospel and they have adopted sin as their norm. Instead of calling people to repentance, they're calling you to celebrate somebody else's sin, and they think that's what Jesus wants you to do, celebrate sin with him. Making an entire mockery of the cross, his death, his burial, his resurrection, and his coming again. Southern Baptist megachurch featuring Willy Wonka. This is for Christmas. Lyrics about vodka Flying Santa Clauses, but not one mention of Jesus Christ. You got these LGBTQ pastors now running around trying to change the theology of their once faithful church bodies. I go back in my mind, and and like I say, it's not easy today doing this program. There's so many, I've got so many thoughts and I'm trying to just tie them together and it's not easy. When you feel a little bit dizzy, you feel a little bit out of it. But you know you still have to warn people. You still have to be the watchman. And it's so hard. And it's like, Lord, can somebody else do this for a while? You have feel you have so called pastors of these big mega churches that are that are writing publications saying where Jesus made mistakes, that Jesus was wrong, and these reprobates are claiming they are right. They're trying to become gods of their own in their mega churches. And I'm looking at all these letters. I'm looking at all these news stories. I look at the things that people send me. And, and I think of that, that great hymn of the church. The church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. And one of the lines in there, their cry goes up, how long? Lord, how much longer before you come back and tear down? these sinful buildings of apostate worship? How long before you come back to judge 
and separate the sheep from the goats? How long do our children have to be under the threat of perverted people in our schools, in our churches, in our public libraries? How long before you come back, Lord, to crush it and put an end to it? And Lord, how much more can I endure? How much more of this can I, can I deal with before it just eats my soul out? You know, I, I, I think at some of the people that I had respect for, I've been around Christian radio on and off in my career. I've been in secular radio, engineering on air, and I've worked in what I considered to this day some very heartfelt Christian ministries that were very accountable and were working to do the right thing. None of us ever got rich. That's probably one one way to, to discern. You know, we we had an impact but we didn't live like we were wealthy. Believe me, we didn't. We were underpaid for the kind of work that we did, but God always provided. And so you have some former famous gospel singers that had an impact, especially in the, in the 80s and 90s, who now want to host same-sex weddings. They've walked away from their faith. You know, I, I wasn't going to do this, and I'm, I, I'm really not going to get too deep into this right now, but you look at the parable of the sower where the seed of God was cast and how it was cast and it grew in some places, but the cares and all the perversions of this world has choked it right out. We see a scary number of people that are supposedly contemporary Christian singers with very famous uh, songs. They become wealthy. And how many of those in the last couple of years have shocked everybody saying, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God anymore. God is just a construct of simple minds. And so people that were entertaining in mega churches, selling hundreds of thousands of copies of records being played on contemporary Christian radio stations, how many of these people you looked up to, or in some cases are still being looked up to, that now have rejected the faith once delivered, declared themselves to be Christ-free, non-believers, and want to move on with their secular life. This is what gets to me, and here we are almost to Christmas. And how many churches will be closed on Christmas Day to make it a family day? You know, it's, it's, it's a day for playing with your new toys and gifts on a football game. Jesus is no longer the reason for the season. It's family time. And we'll get together for a little rock concert, maybe on Christmas Eve, and we'll, we'll, we'll worship Willy Wonka or some thing flying across the, the ceiling. There's some weirdness out there. Hillsong with a, with a, this came out. Hillsong, Christmas, it's a circus with a breakdancing Santa Claus. church is in trouble you know i spent a couple of weeks ago i probably shouldn't have made the trip that's why i'm probably so weak right now i I made a trip to help launch a small church it's going to have a lot of troubles getting started and i realized that i shouldn't have even gone you know for the health issues but something i'm going to have to deal with to help put it back on the right path I may seem like I'm just grasping for words because my heart is just so broken for the world that I see around me. And the churches that I once had great respect for have become just an apostate mess. Parents have been deceived. My generation, the baby boomers, failed our children miserably. Not all, but many did. The generation given so much is now we are in our late 60s and 70s and heading toward 80. We have some of the most non-believing children and we watch those that declare a faith in Christ becoming smaller and smaller, churches shrinking. 
there are two kind of shrinking churches. One that does not bother me when I find an apostate church with a little woman past red up there talking about Jesus loves your sin. He loves you just the way you are. You don't even need to change to come here. Those churches, as far as I'm concerned, can burn to the ground tomorrow with a lightning strike and it wouldn't hurt my feelings with the pastorate in it. They are nothing but wolves in sheep's clothing. They're goats, feeding goats and killing sheep. Those churches are damned, period. There is no life left in them unless they repent. Then you have other churches trying to hang on But the world hates, hates Jesus Christ. They love their winter solstice. You want to know why they like their winter solstice? It's darkness. Think about that. Celebrating the darkness. That's what happens in the northern hemisphere in the western world. It's no longer Christmas. We celebrate the darkness. We want more darkness. And we bring it into a celebration. Very neo, very neo pagan when you think about it. Yeah, today's not an easy program. Maybe as I get stronger over the days and weeks ahead, I can, you know, get a focus on where God is calling this. I'm tired of being the bearer of bad news. It's so easy to talk about the Fauci's of this world, the frauds of this world, uh, the people like the Rochelle Walensky's that said, take the vaccine, do they, all the lies that they said. I mean, I'm not, I don't want to even be political about it. I'm just going to say they lied. People believe the lie and they still lie. And the media backs them up. You know, if I made a claim that a product would do something and then it failed to do it, and I kept saying it's going to do it, at at what point do you stop believing me? This is my point. We are in a world of darkness, a world of lies, a world of deceit, a world of greed, and it's not going to get any better. There are some churches that are doing the job, and it's not easy. Like I say, there are some churches that can't close down fast enough, in my opinion. The sooner, the better. The sooner those fraudulent, demon-possessed buildings become something else, the better. The sooner the church stands up to these indoctrination camps, stops playing these LGBTQ games or transgender games. It's funny. I have to say this. The same goats that are telling you that children know in the womb that they're in the wrong body, they also promote abortion. So if a child at four months in the womb knows he's in the wrong body, how dare you kill it? What gives you the right to kill it? But see, demons never claim to be logical. They're farcical. And your brain becomes so destroyed, you can no longer see, you only believe the lie. And I've said that in this radio program for quite a long time. We are living in a Second Thessalonians age where people are believing the lie over the truth. And no matter how much you show them the truth, they can't see it, they will not see it, they do not want to see it. And so the goats will stay home on Christmas Day. They'll drink their vodka, they'll watch their football game, and they'll call it family time. Because we don't want to mess with our family and our friends' time. Jesus is not really the reason for the season anymore. Santa Claus and Willy Wonka are. What a world in which we live. When I get back on the other side, and like I say, today has just been one of those really hard days for me. I need your prayers now more than ever. I'm doing better, yes. But it's still not easy. And so I I, I just wish you pray for strength I wish I could take a week or two off to, have, to to really get better, but I just don't see that happening. I just have nobody I can count on to fill in to do the program. It's, it's just asking too much of anybody. Maybe somehow we can slide into the first of the year. I've got surgery in uh, around the... Uh, I'm trying to remember what date is. I know I've got some pre-op stuff around the 5th of January. Then I think the surgery's around the 
maybe it's the 10th, I can't remember. And how long the recoup will take this time, I don't know. There's some other treatments being done this time that were not done last time. And I don't know what the side effects are or if they're going to be debilitating for a while. I don't know. So I'm going to keep trying. And I'm going to try to find out more. And how we can, maybe I can get enough strength to get a few programs ahead. I don't know. But I know that we are coming into a time that I, I, I just have a bad feeling. We, we know how quickly churches can be shut down in the name of a virus. Oh, yeah, the bars and liquor stores, they're fine. They can stay open. You know, they, the marijuana shops, they can be open because they're necessities. The church is not. The reprobates are running the world. And if you don't believe it, just look at the staff that inhabits the White House these days. If you don't believe that we are being led by hell-bound demonic individuals, no, look no further than Nancy Pelosi. Abortion is health care, and I'm a good Catholic. Let me explain to you something, Ms. Pelosi. Let me explain to you something, Mr. President. Let me explain to you something, Vice President Harris. Let me explain to you something, Pope Fraud, Francis the Fraud. Every time you have communion, you're, you're taking damnation under yourself because you're unrepentant. I'm going to call it as I see it. Joe Biden, every time you go forward to take that, that sacrament to your body, you're taking it, as St. Paul said, unto your own damnation. And at what point is your conscience so seared and destroyed you never can see the truth again. There are millions in this world that have seared their eternal souls. And I don't think they have a chance of being redeemed. They have, they've crossed the line. And yet we, the true believers are the ones being condemned, marginalized, can't say Christmas. And we're called the evil ones because we don't believe that men dressed as women should be sexually exposing themselves to little kids. We're the bad ones because we don't believe that. I'm running over, I know. And I'll try to change gears. Maybe I can be more positive on the other side. I don't know. I'm just talking to you today from the heart in these days before Christmas. As we remember a dark time when Jesus came to this earth. Lord, it's a dark time now. If you believe in this ministry, would you consider giving it your financial support to keep it on radio? I think that radio is still a vital part of what we do. And if you would, would you consider making a check payable to Ancient Word Radio? Ancient Word Radio. Mailing address is Post Office Box 510. P.O. Box 510. The city is Chilhowie. C-H-I-L-H-O-W-I-E. Chilhowie, Virginia. Chilhowie, Virginia. And the zip code in Chilhowie, Virginia is 24319. That's 24319. 24319. Today, we need to decide who it is we serve. And and I think, and this is where I need your prayer so, so, so much. If you can't hear to my voice, I'm getting tired of being a bad news newsman. It's easy. There's... I get, I have a, all these websites that I, some I have to pay to be on to get the news. And I get tired of it. It's so easy to find the bad news. I, I, I need to find, where, where is God calling this program to be? Am I to be just a bearer of bad news or should I be a watchman on the wall bringing you into where Christ would have you and the church be? Man, I know I'm going over and I'm going to, I apologize, but the thought just occurred to me. When God told Noah to build the ark and the time came, Noah and his family went in the ark to be safe. At no time did, did God say, just hang on to the outside of, you know, put some pegs on the outside or a couple of ropes and hold on for the next month. No, he bought them into a place of safety. 
And something tells me that when I get on the other side of this break, I think we need to explore exactly what that means. This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. The closed doors of Bethlehem in a moment. Shalom Aleichem. This is the nice Jewish boy, Jonathan Kahn, your Jewish connection, bringing you the riches of your Jewish roots in Jesus. Now get your pen out as fast as you can so you don't miss out. I'm receiving a special free gift you're going to get and love in a moment. No room at the inn. One of the most famous phrases in the Bible and in the English language. No room at the inn. When Yosef and Miriam, Joseph and Mary, came to Bethlehem to bear the child Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, they were told there was no room at the inn. We're so familiar with it that we missed the lesson for our lives. Here they are walking in the center of God's will, about to fulfill the ancient prophecies of the Hebrew scriptures and the door slams in their face. There's no room at the end. Bethlehem was filled with closed doors that night. So they went to a manger and there he was born king of the Jews, Messiah, the light of the world. No room at the end teaches us something precious and profound. See, in your life, there'll be many closed doors. It doesn't matter how close you are to God or how much you walk in the center of his will, you'll still come up against closed doors. But when the door closes in your face, when the door closes on that dream and on that plan, on that hope, and you hear the words, there's no room at the end, know for sure that God is something better. The moment the door closes, God is opening up a window. Trust the Lord, stand in faith, and persevere in hope. Remember the manger, my friend, because without the closed doors of Bethlehem, there'd be no manger scene in Bethlehem. And which is more beautiful, a room at a hotel or the manger scene? See, when the door closes... To you in the Lord, know and have confidence that there's something better and more beautiful waiting to bless you as you don't give up, but persevere because there's yet a manger in Bethlehem. Want more? Ask for no room at the inn. Now, the free gift for you. What if you discover the place where the lost Ark of the Covenant was? Well, a newly revealed ancient discovery just as awesome. The mystery of the temple doors, you'll love it. It's our free gift to you. And sapphires, daily spiritual vitamins guaranteed to revitalize your walk or a free New Testament. How do you get all these free gifts? Easy. Just remember Jesus' Hebrew name, Yeshua, and dial it. That's all you do. Just dial 1-800-YESHUA-1. But call now. You'll be blessed. 1-800-YESHUA-1. Now, the Jewish people brought you the blessings of salvation. I invite you to join with me to bring it back to them, to bless those who blessed you and reach the unreached peoples from every nation. Just call now, 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's Y-E-S-H-U-A-1. Or write me direct, the nice Jewish boy, at Box 1111 in Lodi, New Jersey, 07644. It's the nice Jewish boy. It's Box 1111, Lodi, L-O-D-I, New Jersey, 07644. 44. Well, till next time, this is Jonathan Kahn saying Shalom Aleichem. Peace be to you, my friend and Messiah. Tik Vatenu, our hope. This is Truth to Ponder. With Bob Bierman. And welcome back to part two of our Tuesday edition of Truth to Ponder. And I'm your host, Bob Bierman. Like I say, I want to apologize if I seem to be rambling a little bit, tired in my voice, in my speech, in my mind. It's because I am. And there's not much I can do about it for the days and weeks ahead. It's getting better each and every day. That, That I'm thankful for. I can also tell you without a doubt that your prayers are being answered on many levels. Number one, the real issue that has been just making me feel horrible is getting better, but the recoup time to build back your blood and everything else that goes with it, it's not overnight. And so I still have my periods of, well, extreme fatigue, sometimes even a little bit of dizziness, but it's to be expected. And we, we do the best that we can before this microphone. I, I, and I want to, like I say, this week before Christmas, maybe this is a good time to talk about these things. I, I want to get away from some of the news. I really do. I'm so sick of just bringing you nothing but bad news. I mean, you know, it's, it's like that song from many, many years ago. You know, the, the TV people just giving you their dirty laundry. It's easy. The world is a very sick and perverted place these days. And it doesn't take a lot of looking to see it. My question has been, and 
during these, this really started a year ago. And I I didn't know how this would, you know, play out over time. With the pandemic, we all learned a very sudden lesson. Those that go to church, those that took church for granted, suddenly saw the churches closed down. And I'm not going to argue, was it the right thing or the wrong thing to do? That's not even my point. The point is, it could be done. Churches suddenly were in the crosshairs of law enforcement, politicians, mayors, governors, and were shut down because churches were super spreader events and people were going to die if they go to church. And so the churches must be shut down for your own safety. The goat shut down the church. And all of a sudden they had no way to connect. And too many churches in desperation try to come up with something. Most of it was pretty bad. Facebook Live, I've seen, and still there's some out there that's awful. I'm sorry. You're not helping the cause with somebody with a cell phone and you can't understand what they're saying trying to pretend you're worshiping on a cell phone. You had years to prepare to think about outreach and too many churches were so internally focused on their stinking four walls they didn't know how to grow a church didn't know how to share the faith they were happy in their club I've seen that play out many a time they were content the way they were now I know I'm meddling now and I'm going to get somebody mad but I've been in my lifetime I have visited some churches that you know they're just little family operations well you know my grandmother gave that window and my grandfather helped put that pew in and this that and the other and we do what we do things our way here and we're glad to have you visit but don't don't ask us anything and suddenly when their church was shut down for the pandemic in panic they got somebody some teenager with a iphone to pretend that they're doing an online service and the mega churches, they were better prepared because they've been doing theatrics for a long time anyway. I had, I had a listener write the program one time and say, you know, I went to one of those kind of churches, found you on the radio, and then one day I was watching my church on a Sunday, you know, where the performers had come to gather to put the church service on the air, you know, on Facebook Live and YouTube, I don't know, what whatever streaming services they used. And it hit me that it was more of a theatrical event than it was a worship service. Where do you find the balance? Now, like I say, I, I, I want to. I'm trying to be choosing my words carefully. And I know that when you're mentally tired, it's sometimes easy to forget something, or something not come out the way that I want it to come out. Are we prepared for the next pandemic? Some churches are getting back to normal. They're still not where they were. And may never be back to where they were. What is your plan going forward? You know, during the break, I had a a moment just to take a, a few seconds to check any emails that had come in. And I had a couple that really just stood out to me. One is from a fellow clergyman who lives in West Texas. And he's asking permission to develop a home church. And the Lord has blessed him where he lives at with a, with a nice home. His, he and his wife had worked in other things in their life. And they've got this living room that can accommodate a number of people. He is also trying to put together a small little studio for radio and or some video stuff to be as an auxiliary ministry for church work, to empower, to teach, and train. In those times, you can't get together. So he's asking my permission. Of course, I'm going to give him my permission and my blessing and my encouragement. We need more of this, not less. And then a a letter from a listener. Uh, A new listener discovered me on shortwave. And I'm thinking, I know how bad I've been sounding these last several weeks. It's not been easy to do this program. I am not firing, as the old saying goes, on all eight cylinders. It's rough, very rough, and it may stay rough for a while. I don't know. I'm trying. I really am. 
I'm going to ask you a question. And, and this is where I want to take the program for the moment right now. You know, we are the light of this world. And, and our light may not be that bright, but darkness is dark. Light is light. And I'm deeply concerned about the future of the church, of individuals, and how we're going to get through all this. It's not the first time this world has gone through some real painful periods. And it won't be the last. But I don't think much of the church is ready. Too much of what is the church today was the church of convenience. If there's nothing else better coming along like a football game or some activity with my kids or going Christmas shopping, we might get to church. And that is true in a lot of places. Christmas Day, oh, that's our family time. We, we, can't, we can't mess with our Santa time. What do you mean come to church? You know, even as a pastor, when I, when I was the pastor of a growing church, I, that, that Christmas Day was an issue for some, not me. Granted, in, in my church body and where I was a pastor, Christmas Eve was always the big deal. Always the big deal. And nothing wrong with that. I mean, really, there's, I mean, the, it was a wonderful, beautiful service that I think impacted a lot of people's lives. Yet the next day, Christmas Day, I didn't care what day of the week it was, whether it was a Monday or a Sunday was irrelevant or a Wednesday, it didn't matter. I was back to that church in time to do a service for anybody that showed up on Christmas Day every year. And I had a few people say, you know, with such a great service you do on Christmas Eve, we, we don't really need to have one Christmas Day. And I said, you know, not everybody can get out there at night. Not everybody drives at night. Not everybody wants to stay up that late that night. It's not practical for everybody. But Christmas Day can be for those that can't make it Christmas Eve. And that was very big to me. Look, as a youngster... I can remember what Christmas Eve and Christmas Day were like and the and the days before Christmas. I was in a group of carolers. We went door to door to the shut-ins for days before Christmas. Then we had the Christmas Eve services, plural, because we were a big enough church that had to have more than one. And then I was singing in other churches up until after midnight. But you want to know something? Christmas morning, as a kid, yeah, we got up early before sunrise to open gifts. But guess what we were doing by 7.30 or 8 o'clock Christmas morning? We were having breakfast and then getting ready, bathed, showered, whatever the case may be, to go to church. Christmas Day, we, we you did not miss Christmas Day. Even if you went to three different services on Christmas Eve, one or two in your own church and then singing at another, we didn't think about ditching church to play with our new Lionel trains. There was plenty of time in the almost two-week vacation we had that began right before Christmas to play with those toys and enjoy that time. The world hates Christmas. That's why they want to call it the winter celebration. In the Northern Hemisphere, as I said before, it makes perfect sense. We're celebrating the day with the least amount of light. The pagan celebration is what has become important. We have given ourselves over to neo-paganism, even in, in our sciences, even in, our, in the way we raise our children. We are now becoming the pagans in the darkness of old. And so when I think about being a watchman on the wall, being a light unto this world, being a preservative, you know, I, I know that we're going against the grain. I get that. But it doesn't mean you stop and just give up. Sure, I'd like to be, I'd like to get out of the battle for a few days like somebody on the front line and get a little rest. Maybe I can. I don't know. The world is celebrating darkness and we're trying to celebrate the light. And it's getting increasingly hard to do. 
because the light has been rejected because mankind loves the darkness. They love the the transgender destruction of, of young bodies. These perverted men dressing as women with foul mouths and language and sexual immorality parading in front of little kids and parents thinking it's okay. I'm watching a little video of the question being asked by some of these really weird looking mothers. So do you think this is age appropriate for your like seven year old to see a half naked man with, you know, oh yeah, it's appropriate for my child. Your child would be better off having its head dashed against the rocks for what you're doing to him. It's a world of darkness. The world loved the darkness. And that's what Christmas has always been trying to celebrate, the world getting the light and trying to get out of the darkness. Maybe tomorrow or Thursday I'll pick up more on this topic. But this idea of, you know, we are the light of the world and the light is getting dimmer as the world is trying to go deeper into darkness. We're heading back to the catacombs and the church is not ready. The apostate churches will never be ready. They will they will completely self-destruct when that day comes. And they'll stand before God, I never knew you. But we were social justice warriors in your name and we we were helping children trans, you know, transgender their bodies from boy to girl because they were just you made them wrong, God. We have to fix it. And all else that goes with it. The sexual perverting of our children. Keeping them in the darkness and out of the light. There's a price to be paid. And so I just want to be as emphatic as I can with you right now. I look at what this radio program currently is and where God may be leading it. I look at those that I'm trying to raise up to do their part in in the church, in their community. There's going to be a day when you're not going to find even a faithful church in the Bible Belt. I'm already seeing that. Little this little area we live in Virginia is a beautiful place, but there's but how many people really even go to church anymore? Not many. And of the churches you go to, how many are being faithful proclaimers of the gospel? Fewer and fewer each day. I don't know. I, I've got a few thoughts, and I, I maybe I'll wait till Thursday and Friday to share them. I think Friday we'll do a Christmas special. I need to get away from the news, if you don't mind. I really do. I want to do something positive in 2023. We started this program in 2020 to bring you truth, information, and try to sort through all the lies and the deception that was already coming on a global scale. We were condemned, ridiculed, and made fun of for doing it. We were told we were conspiracy theorists and, you know, don't listen to these Bible-thumping boobs or whatever you want to, you know, buffoons. I mean, I was called everything. I don't, and guess what? I could care less because everything we told you ended up being true after all. Has anybody said, sorry, Bob, for, you know, calling you a a liar? No, not a one. They keep, many keep choosing to believe the lie. And that's unfortunate. And so, yeah, we need to do truth. I I just need to restructure this program differently than I'm, I'm doing it now. It's getting to the point, I don't want to be stale, but I don't want to leave you uninformed. What would you want me to do with this radio program you you, all of you that support this program depend upon this program that have encouraged me with this program what are the things that i need to be doing differently with this program this is look look at it this way this airtime that i have is an opportunity it is an opening and i recognize more and more with each passing day that I'm a watchman on a wall, but I'm also an evangelist at heart. And I need to find that balance in my life. To be honest, I'm getting tired of being just radio announcer. I'm also called to be a pastor. And how do I, how do I balance those two entities to teach and to preach, 
to bind us together, forsaking not the assembling of thyselves, which is the manner of some. I understand we are coming into a time where just as in the days of the Roman Empire, they had to hide in the catacombs. They had to bring communion to people's homes that couldn't get there. We need to understand what the church was like when it was pushed underground. Are we ready to be pushed underground again? If you don't think it's going to happen, it's going to happen. I've told you a hundred times, you'll never fix this nation at the ballot box. That's not how this nation can be repaired. It can only be fixed inside your heart with a relationship built in Jesus Christ. It cannot be fixed by politics. It cannot be fixed by news people. It cannot be fixed by do-gooders. It can only be fixed by those that have yielded themselves unto Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And even then, this world will, will choose the darkness over the light. Yeah, not a very pretty picture, is it? But eternally it is. See, I've read the back of the book, We Win. It's not going to be easy. And, and I'm, like I say, what do I need to do to help you? What do we need to do with this hour that I have on, on shortwave and this time that I have as a podcast? God has put a lot of technology at my fingertips that I'm not even using. But I need to. But I can't do it all by myself. And a lot of people are not understanding that. I'm 68. I thought I'd be retired by now, but I never, I never thought I'd really be retired, but... There is a lot of this ministry that needs to be passed on to others, not just me. And there are other things that yet need to be done to be prepared for the age in which we're about to enter. A very dark age, I really believe, because the world is celebrating darkness. They kick Christ out of Christmas. It's now the winter celebration. Yeah, the darkest day of the year is what the world wants to celebrate. Now, this has been a rough radio program, and I, I appreciate every prayer that you've been saying for me. And somehow, if we get through this weekend, I think maybe I'll feel better by next week. I already am, but it's still hard. If you believe in this ministry, would you help support it financially to keep it on the radio? And, and really, let me know what you think. Our mailing address, by the way, make the check payable to Ancient Word Radio, Ancient Word Radio, And as we get into next week, I'll talk more about some other things that are in the background, things we can do. The mailing address is Post Office Box 510, Post Office Box 510. And the city is Chilhowee, C-H-I-L-H-O-W-I-E, Chilhowee, Virginia. And the zip code in Chilhowee is 24319. That's 24319. As I came into this segment, I talked about, as we left the first segment, how God provided Noah and his family the ark, a safe place. We need to use this radio program and the technology God has put in our fingertips to create those, those safe places to keep us connected so we are not disconnected. We are not alone. We are not cast out by ourselves into the darkness. Pray about that. And maybe Thursday I'll talk a little bit more about how we can how we can be light in a darkening world. We always end the radio program with those words. Being a light in an increasingly darkening world. Until tomorrow, may God richly bless you is my prayer. This has been Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. To find out more, visit our website, Truth, the number two and the word ponder.com. That's truth, the number two, ponder.com. Truth to ponder, shining the light of truth in a darkening world.